Today, I'm going to start a new series on how we can use KiCad a little bit more professionally and get the most out of this wonderful software that we are provided with. So in this series, I will be following a Instructables tutorial on a drone project, but the schematic is not the important bit. The important parts are the tips and tricks that I will show you for KiCad. So what we will do in this series as it progresses over the year is firstly create a good looking schematic that's easy to review, easy to follow and follows industry best practices. Then we'll move on to the PCB design side of it. We will cover bill of materials, we'll cover plugins, we'll cover more advanced topics like generating documentation and things like that as well. So this series is going to be absolutely packed. In this video, I will introduce you to the controls, sheet templates and details, and how we can fill them in. And then I'm going to show you how I would capture the schematic for the drone project that I am following. So creating our schematic, what I'm going to do is create a top sheet first and create a hierarchical design so that we're using multiple sheets and that the schematic is not too crowded and it's easy to follow when someone is reviewing it. In the top sheet, obviously I'm gonna have like a table of contents, a block diagram, a little bit of a description for the PCB. We can also include additional things like fiducials and things that are not going to be part of the bill of materials. We can also include other hardware bits that may be part of the bill of, bill of materials, such as a case or if you have some other components that need to go on, but they're not necessarily part of the schematic. We can add those in as well. And I'll show you how to do that. As part of the design, we'll create different types of connections, you know, direct connections, net labels, global nets, hierarchical nets, basically show you how they work, how they influence um, different parts of the design in terms of the schematic capture as well as the PCP design side. So obviously I will cover the basics like placing components, placing uh, wires, how we can create differential pairs in this. And then I will move on to slightly more advanced topics such as creating net classes and how we can use the net classes to influence the design. As part of the series, I will show you how I manage my libraries because it is slightly different to how KiCad does it. Because on my library, I like to have the manufacturer, manufacturer partners and things like that. So that if I'm placing an order, it's easy to do. Talking about ordering PCBs, I'd like to introduce you to PCBWay. They offer high quality PCB manufacturing with precise tolerances and excellent finish options, making sure your design looks and performs exactly as intended. The service is top notch and I've used them many times in the past with fast turnaround time and instant quotes. Also the customer support is very good. So if you do reach out to someone on the site, they respond very quickly and are very helpful. One of the things I like to highlight as a creator PCBWay isn't just a fab house. They have a huge community of makers where they share their projects that other people can download. So if you're interested in exploring that, I would suggest you check out PCBWay. So the shared projects is just over here. You go in there and you can see there are, there are many different projects that they have, all uploaded by various users. And looking at these banners, you can see they also run contests. So that's really good. So if you want to take your PCB design that you learned on this video series, consider ordering your PCB from PCBWay and becoming a part of the maker community. So make sure to check out PCBWay. And now back to the video. The project that we will be following is the one on the screen now. So you can see it's a drone running on ESP32. Fairly small, fairly simple, but I think it will be a good project to work along with when we are doing this video series. So the end product, when we finish designing our PCB will be something like this. And the parts, if you wanted to order yourself, are fairly cheap as well. So if you wanted to get this made with PCB way, and if you wanted to build your own drone, it's fairly easy to do as these parts are fairly cheap. The author of this project has provided some schematics and everything on their, on their website or on this website, Circuit Digest. So that's what we will be using for this. Obviously, I'm going to lay it out in a different way to show you how you can basically improve how you use KiCad, but essentially this is the circuit that I will be following. So I would like to stress this video series is not about the circuit itself, but it's about learning different aspects of KiCad and how we can utilize them as best as possible. So let's get started with the project now. When you first open KiCad after installing it, so I'm on version 8 at the moment. So just to give you the accurate information, I'm on version 8.07. I think this is the latest build as I'm recording this video. 
Now, when you first open KiCad, you land on this project manager page. This is where all the core tools are accessible. So you have the buttons for the schematic editor over here. You have a symbol editor. This is basically where you can manage your symbol libraries. You have your PCB editor. You have your footprint editor. This, this is where you can manage your footprint libraries. You have a built-in Gerber viewer. You have an image converter. I will talk more about this later on in the series. You have a calculator tool, which is very handy when you know doing slightly more complex designs because you can do your impedance calculations, um, your track width calculations and things like that. You have your drawing sheet editor. This is basically what I was talking about in terms of the template. So you can use this, but so you can use this tool over here to create your own template for A3, A4 size schematics or PCB designs. Now, I highly recommend if you're going to use this more professionally, then you create your own template so you have the information that you need. I will show you how to create your own template later on in the series and how you can create your own project template, which is very handy. So once you have basically created a document style and you've put in your PCB capabilities and your schematic requirements, you've kind of designed and organized your, your main top sheet as it were, then you can turn that into a template. So any future projects, you basically open up the template, click save as, and you have everything already input, which is very handy. Then finally, on the core tools, you've got the plugin and content manager. I will talk more about this later on in the series, but there are some very handy tools in here that you should download and I'll let you know which ones and how they work. Over here, you have your project file. You can see I've got something loaded in at the moment, but that's not too important. So if you have any folders or anything like that inside, they will all show up over here. You can create your new projects. You can open existing projects. Now, one of the other things that you should be aware of is the preferences tab over here. The other tabs are not too important at the moment, but in the preferences tab, you can manage your symbol and your footprint libraries, and you can configure the path for your sheet templates and your project templates and things like that. So if I go into the configure paths, you can see over here where the 3D model path is, where third party documents are and where our footprint symbols, templates and user templates are. So when we create our own templates, basically we can set it to our own specific path, which we will be doing. And then these two, so let's just look at the symbol libraries as an example, points to any libraries that you may have created by yourself. So I can show you an example of libraries that I have. So you can see I've got EE, so engineering experience, underscore connectors over here. And then I've got microcontrollers, resistors, diodes, ICs, things like that. Now I've managed my own libraries because it makes it easier for me to generate a bill of materials, which is very important when you want to order a PCB assembly from your PCB house. And you can do it in the format that's requested by the PCB house. So they will have a template, which I'll show you later on. And with one click, you can generate a bill of materials in their template if you manage your library as well. So that's all the options that you need to worry about in the kind of the main window. Obviously, you've got the tool option over here, which is just repeating what's down here. And then finally, we're going to create a new project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go new project and click new project here. You also have new project from template, which we will do later on, not at the moment. But show you what's inside there. You can create Arduino projects. So if you're going to make an adapter board for an Arduino or something like that, you can, you know, you've got loads of different things already built in here and you can add your own projects in here as well. So lots of different things that you can do. So file, new project, and I'm going to find a good location for my project. You can see I found a good location for my project and I've called the project ESP32 drone. What I'm going to do is go into the schematic editor and you basically get introduced to a page like this. The first thing that you want to do is go into your page settings over here and fill in this information. So revision is the first one. Title, I'm going to call it ESP32 drone project or drone PCB. So you can see I've filled in all the information I need. I know I will be going for A3 sheets because it just gives you more room to kind of play around with. Now if I press OK on that, you can see the sheet has gone to A3. So we've got a bit more room. Now going to this template, you can see that the company title comes over here and all the comments go up like this, which I don't really like this format. And I think, you know, doing your own sheet template format is a little bit better and we'll do that later on. So we filled this information in. We're ready to basically start our project. So to keep it very basic for now, what you do in this schematic editor, which is basically what you got here, is you create your circuit design. You can create your uh, bill of materials from here and you can 
basically go on to do your PCB design from here as well. So one of the things you might need to do is assign footprints if you're not using your own library. But first, a rundown of the controls. So majority of the controls you need are going to be on this side over here. So you can see I can place down new components. I can highlight nets if I need to. I can place down power points or power pins or power designators, how you want to label them. So in this, you basically got VUSB and things like that. So three volts. 5 volts, 12 volts, ground, analog ground, digital ground, things like that. All of these things do have shortcuts. So placing a component is key A, placing power is P, placing wire is W. So this is placing a wire. And basically I can show you. So if you want to place a component, so let's add a symbol. So USB, let's place down a 16 pin USB connector in the middle somewhere here. And if you wanted to place a wire from here you basically can click this or press the w key on your keyboard and you can do this then if you want to put a power symbol which is over here what i'm going to do is call this v usb put down v bus so you can see we created a net from here so v bus pin on the usb c connector which goes to this green wire and goes to this flag over here now this flag is very useful because it lets you connect v bus to different components very easily so if I was to put down another connector or something like that, let's say we put down a five pin connector down here somewhere and we wanted to connect this V bus line to this connector as well. What we can do is basically take this V bus and place that over here. And that will mean that this connection is connected to over here on the PCB design side as well. I'm going to add the ground symbol in. So again, pressing the P key on the keyboard and just finding a ground symbol. I want to connect this pin over here to ground and I want to connect the shield of the USB-C connector to ground as well. If I left click, I can select the wires. I can select this. I can select the component itself. If I double click on it, you get information about the connector. When we create our own symbols, we can add in more fields over here to manage our component library better and our bill of materials better. If you right click, you can see you can add a bus or add a wire. A bus is basically a connection that lets you have multiple connections inside it. So let's say you have a 8-bit data line or something like that. You basically can use a bus to configure that data line and you can tap into and out of the bus as you need to. And obviously I'll show you that later on how we can do that because it does require some finesse around how you manage the naming of the connections themselves. You have other symbols over here, so no connect, you have net labels. So if I was to, let's say, have a net over here and I wanted to give that net a name, so CC1, basically you can press this button over here or you can press the L key. Now what this does is you've got this net label called CC1 and then for CC1, you can do special things with that label. You can give it a net class if you wanted to, you can assign it to a net class. Or when you go to the PCB design side, um, that track, when you lay it down, it'll, it will basically show you the name as CC1 rather than a automatically generated name, which is very handy when you need to lay out for special things like the power supply or if you've got audio signals or something like that, that you need to be careful with how you lay it out. I like to name every single net just because I think it's easier, it's more meaningful. And if I ever come back to it, I know what's happening. So net labels is one way of connecting these things. So you can, let's say, for example, this connector over here, we can connect this connection from here to here with this net label. We can also do a direct connection like this. Obviously, doing direct connections is not always convenient because as the designs get more and more complicated, doing direct connections makes it very messy to see. You have net class directives. I will go into this in more detail in a future video as part of the schematic series. But net class directives are very important and can really help you design a better PCB and can show the person reading the schematic the intention behind some of the tracks. So this is a very useful feature and I think everyone should use it when designing a PCB. This is a global label. Um, it's more useful when you're doing hierarchical symbols. Well, I just prefer a global label because I think it looks nicer. So it does a similar thing to this label over here, but it looks like this. When you have multiple sheets, the global label will connect across all the sheets. So you don't have to take them between sheets. 
which obviously I've not introduced you to sheets yet, but that will make more sense as I do that. So this is one way of connecting it. And then the final connection style is this hierarchical label, which is useful when you have multiple sheets. So at the moment, this is not going to be very useful to us, but if you have another sheet, and we basically have two pages of schematics and we want to move signals between them in a more controlled way. So let's say we have two parts of the board. One's doing the kind of the USB input power regulation and I don't know, battery charging or something like that. And the second board is just doing the ESP32 microcontroller section. We can control what pins go between the two sections using these labels and basically lets you control it in a more managed way and gives some intention behind what you're doing. Finally, the symbols are basically add sheet. So this creates another sheet. So you can see I've just called it untitled for now. And over here, I've got basic another sheet over here. And if I add another sheet, I can show you what the other symbol was doing. So, so if I add another sheet now, let's call that untitled one, and then let's add some pins. So go inside over here, and let's add some of these hierarchical labels. So just call it in one for now and call that in two. So those two are inputs and copy those, call that out one. And we're going to label that as output. Don't need the other one for the example. So I've, so I've just added some hierarchical labels. Now, if I go back to my root page over here, you can see I added that to this sheet over here. Now, what I can do is click this button and it will basically get the two pins or the three pins that I got from the other side. Now this, I can connect to another sheet or I can connect to anything on this schematic. Obviously, if you've got an input into here, this would ideally connect to an output from this side. So if I go into this sheet and place down a label, let's just call it out sheet two and click the output button on this, go back to the root page and import my sheet pins. You can see I've got an output from sheet one over here going to my sheet zero over here so output to input and obviously the other way around would be the same thing finally we have text labels text boxes just boxes circles and some basic drawing tools now we are going to be using this when we do a more detailed uh, schematic capture so I'm, right now i'm just showing you the basics then i will show you how i would create my schematic for a more complicated project and I'll build the drone project basically as I go along. So don't need any of this at the moment. And I'm going to delete it all. But before I do that, um, there are a bunch of other tools over here as well. But it's quite a bit to go through. Some of the important ones I think to look at is like the bill of materials. So this lets you generate a bill of materials. For print assignment. So if I go into there, you can see some of my components will not have footprints assigned. That's because I'm just using the basic libraries from keycad at the moment but when i do my own libraries they will all have footprints assigned as as a default so we don't have to worry about this but if you're using the basic components from keycad you have to assign a footprint to them so you have a bunch of filters over here so filter by library filter by pin count and use symbol footprints i never used this one myself but then we can give it a connector let's say like this and this is a usb so we can give it a usb connector which there are some available as default on keycad so you can see i've given it some connectors now if i go to my pcb design those connectors that i gave them those components will appear over here and as we get better with keycad and as we use it more and more we can skip that step entirely because all components i think should have a footprint assigned to it by default then there's some other tools over here but i don't think you need to worry about them at the moment you know you've got mirror and rotate and stuff like that you got zoom this is quite useful obviously so you can zoom to objects on this so we've only created this part of the schematic and just zooms nicely into there you can zoom to selection or you can zoom on the whole page you don't need to worry about anything else at the moment so now you have all the basics down what i will do is delete everything that's on the screen now and create my drone project for the drone project i'm going to be doing it slightly more advanced way so i'll be so i will be doing a hierarchical design so i'll be using multiple sheets and i will be creating a top sheet as well 